I want to indulge. I want to talk about psychedelics. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think of the summer of love. I think of people, you know, blissed out of their minds. And I'm, and I'm curious to get your thoughts. Is the love that one may experience in that state a byproduct of the of the chemistry of the drug and therefore some way inauthentic? Or, or are the drugs allowing you access to something that you may not have been able to get to otherwise for whatever reason? What can you tell me about it? Are you it? asking Dacker the scientist or Dacker the mystic or all of the above? I want to ask Dacker in all of his, fa every facet of Dacker, give me the knowledge. What do you got, sir? What can you tell me? Well, you know, I, I think it's important we talk about this because they're here. Uh, 25, 30 million Americans are trying, you know, one of the kinds of psychedelics from psilocybin, LSD, to ayahuasca, to ketamine, et cetera. And, and they're good for certain conditions of suffering. Uh, veterans are very interested in this for as one example. And, um, you know, part of, I think it really is what Melina talked about earlier, which is agape, like you, you know, um, psychedelics uh, aren't about desire, or romantic love. They're about this deep love of life, um, you know, living forms and fellow human beings you don't know. And I, you know, the question of authenticity is a deep one. And a lot of the um, real deep practitioners from the Dalai Lama to indigenous Mayan traditions just see psychedelics as one root of many and really want us to be thinking about how do we build a life that gets to Melina's characterization earlier of like, there are all these loves that I could fill my, my day with, right? Um, but I don't think it's inauthentic. I think it shuts down your self-focused parts of the brain, opens you up to how marvelous life is, you know, and, and how, uh, how core it is to love things. So, I think it's an exciting development in our culture. I'm happy to talk about psychedelics. Go for it. <laughs> Do it. Open the door. No, and the, re the reason I say that is, no, the, the, reason, the, the reason I actually think that's a powerful question yeah. is, um, dear friend, you know, dear friend and spiritual teacher, also literally the person by which I met the love of my life. He married my husband and I, but Ram Dass, his whole journey is this art. And what's beautiful about his kind of hero's journey living this arc is that he started out as this kind of decorated psychology professor and then ran into Tim Leary at Harvard and started, started working with psychedelics. And then, you know, that part of the story is kind of infamous history. But what's beautiful is when he talked about that journey, he talked about how expansive it was and how he dropped his self. And really it's this inducement of awe and oceanic love. Right. And then what's so amazing about that is he felt that he went on many heroes journeys with the, the medicine itself. And then he got to the point where he'd done it so many times that he was like, you go up, but you always come down. And this is where it's, it's the thing that shows you the map, but it doesn't take you to the map maker. And so the thing is, how do you get there on your own? And so mm -hmm. his shift from scientist to spiritual teacher was because he went to the he went to India and seek of the map, like the real map and the real map makers, and thought perhaps like the kind of ancient science that was living there could give him some of those answers. And when he went, he met his guru. He was, you know, had an experience with him that completely meant, melted his mind, his incredibly well formed, beloved mind of his. And then he felt this experience of what he called unconditional love that is this spiritual love, this transcendent love. And it just he lost himself in that love. And then that became the teaching for the rest of his life. So he was like, you know, the professor turned into this other um, teacher. And what I think is beautiful about that is this idea that it's like, how do you get to the place where you don't come down? And so psychedelics will get you into that room, hmm. but they'll kick you out. So I think the practices of, of kind of love and awareness and being like, I know by the time I met him in the very last year of his life, it was like you would sit in his presence and it was just this oceanic wash of love mm. where you kind of dissolved into it. Mm. And that's where, when I look at the way that you can be in the presence of that and it can be its own force and you can fill it kind of writ large. But then when you think about the, all of the descriptions that Melina was saying, or the description of the atomic unit of love, which is that bond, I think what's so powerful is whatever way you slice it or feel it, whether it's through touch, whether it's through words, like the languages of us 
and understanding and feeling love. What I think is powerful is that all of that is in there and Mm -hmm. it's just what's your doorway what's your place in the arc how far are you going to take it can you apply it to yourself and the people around you can you practice that more how far out can you stretch it like when sharon salzberg talks about her work she's like heart is white as the world and that's like so yummy and i love that um there's a bridge between science and that vast mystery beyond it Mm -hmm.